Grab your pens and paper, y'all. Today, I'm gonna be sharing all of the details of exactly what I would do if I was starting a digital products business from scratch today. And just in case you're new here, I'm Latasha. I have sold thousands of units of different digital products, ranging from template packs to evergreen courses to cohort-based courses. So I have a lot to share. I've learned a lot over the years, and I'm really excited to dive into this with you. So the first thing that I would do if I was launching a digital product today is I would hone in on my audience and niche down. You have to really understand who you're going to be talking to with this specific product. I hear all the time, you know, courses and digital products are are over. Like it's it's so hard to sell them because the field is so saturated. And that's only true to an extent. It is definitely still possible to be successful with digital products on online courses, but you have to be hyper targeted to your ideal client. I am not just going to buy a random Instagram course these days, right? I need to make sure that the Instagram course I am buying speaks directly to my pain points, whether that's how to create better reels or how to to get Instagram followers and turn them into customers or, you know, how to run Instagram ads. Like there needs to be a specific use case and it needs to speak to a specific person. I'm also not going to take an Instagram course that is, you know, aimed towards like marketing your book on Instagram. Cause that's not really what I'm interested in using the platform for. So make sure that you really understand who your audience is going to be. And really the best way to start doing this is by using short form micro content to test different ideas. And what I mean by short form, you all know that I am a big fan of long form content, meaning YouTube videos, podcasts, blog posts, for the long term, right? The long game. If you know, hey, I want to rank for this particular topic, I think you should be creating long form content about it. But short form content like Instagram stories, Instagram, TikTok, all of these different platforms, those can be really great for just connecting and just kind of feeling out your audience. You know, if you have any followers to begin with, just talk to them, ask them questions, get them to vote in polls, get them to ask you questions so you can do video responses on TikTok, like all of these different methods of communication are going to be a great way for you to niche down and hone in on that target audience and that specific topic that you want to cover. Now, once you have your idea and your target audience in mind, you want to keep building your content, keep building your relationship with them. Make sure that just like in any other social situation, you are continuing to give value. You're continuing to be a nice person. I've been kind of repeating this phrase to myself over the past few weeks make friends, not fans. I'm a really big believer in that when it comes to growing any social platform. I think you have to just talk to people like they're people, deliver value, and just continue nurturing that audience that you're building by posting helpful content and things like that. Now, while you're doing that, I want you to focus on an evergreen product. So let me back up and share. There are tons of different options for digital products these days. There are evergreen digital products, which would be like an always on doors, always open kind of digital course or something like that. So I have a course called the social media management roadmap, and that is just a go at your own pace. You purchase it, you get access to it instantly, and it's yours forever. And you can watch one lesson at a time. You can binge every single lesson in one night, whatever it is that you want to do. Like it's just always there. There's no real sense of urgency for it because the doors are always open. Then there are cohort based courses, which are more live and group coaching style. So right now I'm enrolling for the social media management accelerator, which meets once a week for a live lecture or a live hot seat, some type of interactive kind of zoom webinar or zoom call. You get assignments throughout the course. And then there's also some kind of on-demand self-study material within that. And then there are also more of like tools or templates, if you will. For me, I have the social media management toolbox, which consists of like 15 or so editable templates. They're all editable in Google Sheets or Canva, specifically for social media managers. So they can learn how to put together a portfolio or do a social media strategy or uh, have a hashtag library, things like that. So those are kind of the three main types, at least when we're talking about courses. But I mean, the possibilities really are endless. I mean, I've seen guided meditations, I've seen coloring book pages, I've seen journal prompts, I think I already said that, but recipes, eBooks, 
all kinds of things. So evergreen is what I would recommend starting with, even though for me, my evergreen courses tend to be a little lower in sales, you know, total volume throughout the year. My cohort based live courses tend to make up a little bit more of my revenue, but evergreen is really great because it's just always on. It kind of acts as a little security blanket for you. Even if you're only making a couple hundred dollars a month from it to begin with, that kind of gives you that fuel and that momentum to be able to work on some of those bigger projects that are going to take up a little bit more of your time to build. I think having an evergreen product also really helps you establish yourself in the market that you're looking to focus in. So if this thing is kind of like the go-to, I know I always recommend, for example, HubSpot inbound as a really great course for learning inbound marketing. And that's just always available for folks. It's really easy. If I meet with somebody and they ask for me for my advice, they're not having to sit around and wait on waiting lists or really try to figure out what this company is all about. It's just always available for them. So that's really what I recommend starting with first. This also, enables you to gather feedback and to test before you scale into something that's going to be a little bit higher ticket. And, you know, as far as price points for those three different types of products, I would say that an evergreen course is probably on the lower end of that. Maybe templates, depending on how complex they are, could be um, in that same category, whereas cohort based courses that have a lot of instruction time, a lot of interaction, a lot of grading time and setup time and admin time, those courses are going to be on the pricier side. So start small with an evergreen course and then use that time to start ideating, doing research, getting feedback, etc so you can build something that's a little bit bigger. Now, something that I find to be very, very important before launching your first evergreen course is to beta test it. Gather five people, whatever you can, can muster up from your social media. Maybe these are past clients of yours. If you're going from coach to course, or, you know, from agency to course, gather a couple of your clients, gather a couple of your friends that you know from networking groups or wherever, and just ask them to give you some honest feedback about your digital product before you set it loose into the world. And the more structured you can make this, the better type out a nice little onboarding document for your beta testers, let them know what to expect out of the course, give them some good timelines around when you need their feedback and make sure to check in. People get really busy, so you don't want to just give them the keys to your course and then ask for feedback, you know, whenever they find it to be convenient, really make this pretty structured. And then I like to use a survey or like a form. You can use type form, you can use HoneyBook, whatever tools that you prefer to use to do like a, a feedback form where you ask particular questions. Maybe if there are any lessons that you're like a little bit unsure of, or there's any format questions that you might have, ask them for that. I find it's easier for people to just fill out a survey than to come up with like this original feedback from their brain. They might worry about offending you. They might not know exactly what you're looking for. So that is always helpful. I think it's always helpful during this phase too, to ask about pricing. And I recommend looking into the Van Westendorp pricing model. I'm sure you've taken surveys before where you've seen this, where it'll say like, you know, at what, what price point would you consider this product too expensive to be considered? At what price point would you consider it to be too low to where it makes it look cheap? Things like like that. And this is going to help you nail down a price without just coming out and asking how much should I charge for this? Because there's so many variables in that. And again, your average person might not even know where to start with that. With that said, your beta testers shouldn't just be average people. You should make sure that you're trying to get beta testers who are at least somewhat in your ideal student base as well. As far as actually launching an evergreen course, there are a ton of different like launch activities that you can use. You can launch with a webinar, you can launch with a content series, you can launch within, um, you know, a lead magnet and an email sequence. You can launch with uh, affiliate marketing. You know, you can reach out to influencers in that particular industry and kind of develop a launch plan from there. But I'll tell you what works best for me for low ticket evergreen products, meaning the evergreen course or the templates, webinars tend to perform pretty well for my particular audience. But again, you're gonna have to test. You may have to try a few different things to see what really resonates with yours. I think the reason that webinars work so well for lower ticket for me is because 
you know, it's just kind of a no brainer. You're on the call, you're learning a lot, you're giving value throughout the webinar, and then you're throwing in maybe a fun little bonus. Hey, you get access to a bonus group call if you join this course, or you get access to these, these journal prompts that I created or whatever the case may be. And people kind of just get into the moment and make that split decision, especially if it's, you know, 50, 70, 80 bucks, they don't really have to think too, too hard about it in most cases. However, for higher ticket products, what I've found is that a longer sales period and a more education-based approach performs the best for me. You know, a five, six, $700 product is something that people are going to need to talk to, you know, maybe their partner about, or they're going to need to save up a little bit. They're gonna to need to wait and do some research and uh, do competitor analysis to see what else is on the market and how your, your product compares to others. So, you know, it takes a little bit longer for people to commit for me and that's okay. So what I do for those launches is I plan like a YouTube series. I've done a couple on YouTube YouTube where, you know, I'll do a week takeover, you know, a week about social media management, a week about online business, things like that tend to work really well, making sure that I'm collecting emails throughout each of those videos so that I can add them to my email sequence and make sure that I invite those folks to live Q and A sessions. And then I'm just kind of feeding them information, sharing testimonials with them, dripping that to them over time. So eventually they do sign up. Also a lead magnet strategy with a similar email sequence works really well. And by the way, for my email, provider, I use Flowdesk. I usually create most of my, you know, uh, lead magnets and graphics and things like that in Canva, if you're curious. Okay. Now, just like you developed a kind of offboarding strategy for your beta testers, I want you to develop a similar review and offboarding strategy for your actual customers. Once you actually start to see sales come in and people complete your course, you don't just want them to drop off. You want to keep them engaged and you want to get their feedback because those early customers are so, so important. They are gonna help you determine what you do offer for one of those longer term, bigger, you know, higher ticket products, whether that's a cohort, course or whatever it is that you may want to do. So I personally build all my courses in Thinkific and Thinkific makes it really, really easy because you can simply add surveys and um, questionnaires, I think they're called, to the end of your courses. And again, just ask questions about, hey, would you recommend this course? What did you like? What didn't you like? And, you know, prepare yourself. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get feedback, especially when you're um, so proud of what you've put together, but it is so incredibly value. And if people take the time to fill out those questionnaires, they want to help you. They want to see you succeed. So try not to take it personally, but instead learn from that. The cool thing about courses is that unlike a book, they're really like a living, document or living material, if you will. You know, you can't go back and edit a published book, but you can always edit or add to an online course, depending on how busy you are. I think it's also really important to take one-on-one -on -one time with your students as well. We started doing this for my higher ticket products, the social media management accelerator and the online business launch lab. We actually do one-on-one -on -one, face to face via zoom interviews with students who volunteer at the end. And doing that has just been so valuable being able to really talk to them and, you know, listen to them. And the great thing is this actually works as double duty too, because we get their consent to use those interviews for marketing materials in the future, which brings me to my next point, which is marketing. You're going to want to use your good reviews that people consent to using as marketing. I always say that happy customers are truly your best salespeople being able to prove that you helped people achieve the result that they were looking to achieve, that you took them from a to Z or a to B or whatever. Um, and you really helped them do what you said you were going to help them do is really the best marketing you can have. You can list out the features of your product all day long. You can list out all the lessons you can, you know, talk about yourself all day long. And that goes kind of somewhere, but really it doesn't go all that far 
Being able to actually hear from students and hear about those results is what's really going to help you fill up your programs and generate that positive, high quality reputation. And then you also just want to build out a content calendar that supports that evergreen course in general. I like to look at all of my lessons. Um, so modules are like the big overarching ideas. Maybe it is social media strategy. And then lessons are those smaller, more specific learnings. So for example, within the social media strategy module, I might have Facebook marketing, I might have TikTok marketing, I might have Instagram marketing, etc. So what I like to do is I like to like create one piece of social content based on each of those lessons, just a little teaser. You know, I might say, hey, here are five tips for TikTok. Hey, here are the image sizes that work best on Facebook and post those as social content to start to sort of flesh out that content calendar. I love to build out my content calendars using Metricool. I actually just did a YouTube video about this tool, sharing my scheduling process and my content calendar process with, with that tool. And it's been super helpful to just have everything all in one place and be able to visually see how everything is going. And they also did offer a gift to my viewers and my listeners. You can get 30 days free on any plan with the code code LATASHA, all caps, with the link that I'm gonna leave in the show notes. So definitely check that out if you are feeling overwhelmed about what types of content to create and how to organize all your content and how to get that good content mix and all of that. So make sure that you are keeping your audience, again, engaged, you're continuing to provide value and leading back to your evergreen course so it's always there for them. And like I said, once you're good with your content calendar and you've, you're have you kind of on a roll with your evergreen course, you wanna take your free time to start working on some type of an add-on or an upsell. Now, I find that when you're developing a higher ticket course or a cohort-based course or whatever the case might be, it works best when you can take those existing evergreen students and move them along you know, in their journeys and then also in turn like down your sales funnel. So if you created an evergreen course about photography 101, you know, like super basic level photography stuff, well then maybe you do a photo challenge that is a group coaching style thing for your higher ticket product. It's not reinventing the wheel with starting with photo for, for dummies or whatever, photos, photo for beginners to affiliate marketing 101, like those are two different things. You might have some crossover, but it's gonna be much more beneficial for you to actually work with the same group of people. I look at it as a huge indicator of success of how many of my students re-enroll for, for different courses, different products that I offer. And there are so many of them. I have people that I've been working with for like years at this point, which I just love and it, and it acts as feedback for me that I'm doing something right. If they're appreciating the educational style and that they are liking the material and the format and all of that. And again, happy students, happy customers are your best marketers. And it's also a lot cheaper and easier to re-enroll people or enroll people in a new course than going out and finding all new customers. You might have to start using ads. You might have to start paying influencers. You're gonna have to spend a lot more time on marketing and, and content development and all of this stuff where if you already have a tight group of people and you have their email already, that becomes a lot easier. Lastly here, something that I feel like I still am pretty bad at doing is developing a promotional calendar for the year. So once you have your evergreen product and maybe like a higher ticket product, start to think about when you're gonna run those higher ticket products. If they are live, if they're still evergreen, then that's not as big of a concern, but you know, really map out when your doors are gonna open, when they're gonna close, when you need to start marketing, when you need to start building out your email lists or you know when you need to start some of those content series and so on. So build this out for the year and make sure that you are sticking to it because something I've learned about running a digital products business is that like time really runs away from me. I am already thinking about summer, really like mid to end of summer right now. That's where my brain is at, even though it's only March that I'm recording this. So, you know, you definitely have to be forward thinking. And you also wanna think about some of those more traditional like promotional dates as well. You know, do you wanna do a Black Friday sale? Do you wanna do a New Year's sale? You know, just depending on what your product is, some of those dates may 
may make sense for you. All right, I think that's it. Those are my thoughts on building a digital products business. And again, if you wanna check out Metricool, they are giving my audience members 30 days free on any of their plans with the code Latasha at the link in the show notes and description box on YouTube. I hope you enjoy it. I'll leave a link for the video I did featuring them as well that kind of walks you through how to use the tool. And also let me know in the comments, are you planning on launching a digital product anytime in the future? I'd love to know about it and also just hear how I can help support you on that journey. Thanks so much as always for tuning in to the Freelance Friday podcast. Please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and be sure to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I post over there on Mondays and Fridays and I will see you in the next one. Bye.